Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. Today we're going to cover something that I think is really challenging in Calc 1 towards the end of the year. When we start talking about mixing together derivatives, functions, and integrals all in one problem, and I know it can be complicated, so what I have for us today is, this is question 3 from the 2014 Calc AB free response section. And we're going to solve this question in the only way I know how through good old-fashioned derivative and integral logic. So let's go ahead and jump right in. It looks like we have the graph of f here, which is some function. Who cares what it looks like? The problem says the function f is defined on the closed interval negative 5 to positive 4. The graph of f consists of three line segments and is shown in the figure above. Let g be the function defined by g of x is the integral of f of t dt from negative 3 to x. So... Before I even get started with this problem, I just want to highlight a couple of things here. Number one, we're given the graph of f of x, right? We're given that graph, but g of x is the integral of f of x. And I know they use different symbols. They use f of t instead of f of x. There's a good reason for that. But just ignoring the notation for now, I just want you to realize that g is the integral of f, which means if I wanted to for instance, g prime of x, the derivative of g, that would actually be the derivative of an integral, which would get you back to the original function, f of x. So remember, this is the integral, which as far as you're concerned, means the area under the curve, and this is the original function. And even wrapping your head around that can be challenging at times, but this is the relationship these two functions have right now. As a matter of fact, if I wanted the second derivative of g of x, that would be f prime of x, which is the derivative of f, which means we would be looking at the slope of our graph. So whenever it asks me any question on this problem, I'm going to refer back to this little cheat sheet right here to figure out what they're asking me for. Either the integral, the area, the original function, which is just the y value of the function, or are they talking about the derivative, which would be the slope? So let's look at the question and see what they're asking for. Part A wants us to find g of 3. So what that means, if I want to say g of 3 equals, looks like that that's going to be the integral. Now, even more important, if we look at the exact lettering they use, the exact notation, they're saying that g of x equals integral from negative 3 to x. So when I plug in 3, I'm plugging in 3 for x, not t in the top bound right there. So what that means is this is the integral from negative 3 to positive 3 of f of t dt. As far as the function goes, the notation, that's still f of x as far as you're concerned. And all they're asking for in this question is what's the area of f of x between negative 3 and positive 3? That's what they're asking for. So if I look back at my graph, where's negative 3? right here and then positive 3 is right here okay so it looks like we've got some work to do and some area to find if you remember the area of a triangle specifically this triangle is going to be one half base times height so the base is one two three four five so one half times five the height is one two three four times four looks like that area is ten so the area of the red is ten and then we need to find this area right there, that little guy. Looks like the base is just 1, so 1 half times 1 times the height, which down there looks like we reached negative 2, and that's just because it, it looks like negative 2 to me. It's very important that we remember the negative sign. If you don't, you're not going to get a negative area, and that needs to be a negative area. So it looks like that area is negative 1. So if I were to find g of 3, it's going to be 10 minus 1, so 9 for part A. Now back to the question. Now we want to find part B. On what open intervals contained in negative 5, less than x, less than 4, is the graph of G both increasing and concave down? Give a reason for your answer. So whenever they say give a reason for your answer, that means we are going to have to write like a paragraph at the end, and that's fine, not too bad. But first we need to figure out what it means for g to be increasing and concave down. So increasing, we need to know this. Increasing simply means that g prime of x, the derivative, is greater 
then zero. And if we want concave down, then what we want is g double prime of x to be less than zero. So this is what we're looking for. If I go back to my handy dandy chart here, g prime is the original function, the y value. So when we say that we want g prime of x to be greater than zero, we're saying that we want the y value of f of x to be greater than zero. In other words, it needs to be positive as opposed to negative. You'll also notice in the question that they said from negative five to positive four. So we were looking at the whole graph and I would say it's positive. Let me erase some of the area here. It looks like it's positive here, here, and here. And once we get past two, it starts to become negative. So I would say from negative five to positive two, it's increasing. Negative five to positive two. Do they want to answer an interval notation? Does it say? Yeah, on what open intervals? So I'm going to write our answer in interval notation, which is like this. The other form you can write it is negative five less than x less than two. That is inequality form. Maybe they accept that. I don't know. I'm not an AP grader. They're both right, so I don't really care. But this is where the function is increasing. And now to find where the function's concave down, I need to look at the second derivative of g, which going back to my handy dandy chart, the second derivative of g is where f prime of x, the derivative, the slope, and we want less than zero. So long story short, we are looking for where f of x has a negative slope. And that's easy to find. Going back to our graph, I would say this is a negative slope and this is a negative slope. So it looks like I have two intervals this time from negative five to negative three, and then again from zero to four. So negative five to negative three, and also from zero to four. I put the union symbol because that's typically what you write when you want to combine two regions in one set. And now basically what I need to do is find where these regions overlap. I think the easiest way of doing that is making a number line. So on the first one from negative five to two, that's the region we want. So let's put negative five to two here. I'll mark it in blue. This is the good region for increasing. Then for concave down, I need negative five to negative three, and then again from zero to four. And you're gonna see there's a couple regions here from negative five to negative three, and then again from zero to four. And now we need to find out where they overlap. That's gonna be this region here and this region there. So my final answer in interval notation is negative five to negative three in union with zero to two. And that is where the function is both increasing and concave down. But don't forget, I still need to give an explanation for this answer. And my explanation would be g of x is increasing and concave down on the interval from negative five to negative three in union with zero to two, because that's where f of x is positive and f prime of x is negative, which is basically what we did. We related g of x to f of x in the, the following ways. And there's a bunch of different explanations you can give, but this is the one I'm gonna give, because it's right. And that's pretty much it for that one. Okay, I hope we're having fun now, because if you're not, it's only going to get worse with parts C and D. Part C, the function h is defined by h of x equals g of x divided by 5x. Find h prime of 3. So I feel like this one's confusing to a lot of people because it's got a function inside of another function. But basically, all you need to do is you're going to find the derivative first, and then you're going to plug in 3. And since h of x equals g of x divided by 5x, this is going to be a quotient rule, and I'm really hoping at this point we remember the quotient rule, because if not, you're in trouble at this point. So the way I do quotient rule, top is u, bottom is v. You might use f of x and g of x, that works too. But my u, the top is g of x, the bottom v is 5x. u prime, the derivative of my numerator, is g prime of x, and v prime, the derivative of my denominator, is just five. And then I'm gonna plug in the formula v u prime minus u v prime over v squared. And just doing that will get me the following. 
5x times g prime of x minus g of x times 5 divided by v squared, so quantity 5x squared. You'll notice I'm keeping g of x and g prime. I'm not going to change that at all in this problem, actually, because it's correct. There's no reason to change it. And this is my derivative, h prime of x. So now if I want to find h prime of 3, then all I need to do is plug in 3 wherever I see an x. Let's go ahead and do that now. It'll be 5 times 3 times g prime of 3 minus g of 3 times 5 divided by 5 times 3, and that quantity is squared. So for my numerator, 5 times 3 is 15. g prime of 3, before I think too hard about that, let me go back to my table. g prime of x right here is the original function, y value, at 3. So I'm looking at my graph, where's 3? Right here. What's the y value right there? That y value is negative 2, because that's negative 2 right there, and that's where it's going. So I'm going to plug in a negative 2 for that spot right there. g prime of 3 is negative 2. Minus g of 3. If you look back at part a, g of 3 is the answer to part a, which means since we did part a, I already know the answer is 9. So I get to save myself some work there. And by the way, if you get part a wrong, that means you automatically get this one wrong, at least for the final answer. Now, luckily, this question's probably worth about two or three points. So there's a good chance that even if you don't get part A, you'll at least get partial credit for part C. And then times five divided by five times three is 15. And we have to square that. This is the no calculator section. So no calculator allowed. 15 times negative two is negative 30 minus nine times five is 45 divided by 15 squared. So I'll get negative 75 divided by 15 squared is 225. If you didn't know that, you would just have to do multiplication the long way, and you'll get 225. And it looks like both of these are divisible by 5. So 75 divided by 5 is 15, and 225 divided by 5 is 45. 15 divided by 45 is 1 third. Looks like my final answer is 1 third. And that's the answer for part C. And now just one part left, part D. The function p is defined by p of x equals f of x squared minus x. Wow. Find the slope of the line tangent to the graph of p at the point where x equals negative 1. Hopefully by now you haven't forgotten what tangent lines are in this class. To find a tangent line, we need two things. We're going to need a point and we're going to need the slope. So for the point, they gave us x equals negative 1 and they give us the function p of x equals f of x squared minus x. There is no g of x involved in this problem. That means no derivatives, no integrals, at least yet. And if I wanna plug in negative one here, then all I need to do is wherever I see an x, I need to plug in negative one. So negative one squared minus negative one. Negative one squared is positive one, so positive one, plus one because those two negatives make a positive. So it looks like we've got here f of 2. Going back to my original function, at 2 right here, the y value is 0. And it's the y value because it was just f of x. It wasn't f prime of x. It wasn't the integral. So in other words, f of 2 is 0. There is my coordinate point, 1 comma 0. Now I still need the slope. The slope is going to be the derivative, p prime of x, which is going to involve a chain rule. If you remember what the chain rule says, it's the derivative of the outer function times the derivative of the inner function. The outer function, if you look at this, is f of x. And the derivative of f of x is f prime of x. So it's going to be f prime of x squared minus x. And then times the derivative of the inside, derivative of x squared minus x is 2x minus 1. So this is the derivative, but I need the slope at negative 1. So plugging in a negative 1 wherever I see x. We already did the x squared minus x, that was 2, and then times 2 times negative 1 minus 1. So let's see here. f prime of 2, that's the slope at 2. Let's look at the slope at 2. So that's not going to be an easy slope to find. It's basically the slope of this portion of the graph in red here. However, I know that slope is just rise over run. 
So for instance, if I look at this point here in blue and this second point here in blue, the rise is negative one, two, three, four, and the run is one, two. So since the rise over run is negative four over two, then that means the slope is negative two. So I'll write negative two right there for the slope of two. And then times two times negative one minus one, it's gonna be negative three. Looks like I get six for my slope. And then if they want the equation of the tangent line, I like to write it in the form y minus y1 equals m times the quantity x minus x1, where one is x1, zero is y1, and six is my m. So I'm getting y minus zero equals six times x minus one. That just reduces to y equals six times the quantity x minus one, which I would accept this is a final answer. And I'm pretty sure the AP graders would as well. But the other correct answer you could also write is y equals six x minus six. That's also correct. And that's pretty much it for this question on the free response section. So again, what is the moral of the story? It really just comes back down to this chart I made at the very beginning. The original function g of x was the integral, which is area. g prime is the derivative, but the original function of f. And g double prime, the second derivative, is really just f prime of x, the slope of f of x. So I hope that made sense. If not, please post in the comments below and I'd be glad to help you. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Take care and bye-bye.